Is that okay. on? Praise God Almighty. We get the joy and honor of coming into God's house again. Yes. Still amazes me that it allows me into his presence. But he paid the price so I could come into his presence. Isn't that amazing? He wanted us here in his presence so much that he died so that we could be here. And that's amazing to me. Let's go before the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. For your word, not mine, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you chose us. We didn't choose you, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and your grace on our lives, even when we don't deserve it, which is all the time, Lord God. But you pour out your grace upon us, Lord Jesus. You come and rescued us out of the land of Egypt, Lord God, out of our own sin and out of the miry clay you picked us up. Now, Lord Jesus, open our eyes to see what you would show us today. Open our ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church today, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, let us bring you honor and glory with everything we do. In Jesus' holy name, amen, and amen, and amen. You know, last week I was sharing that, uh, that the Lord revealed to me some 27 years ago when I was ordained as a pastor that I would be preaching to the church in the end times. And we're in the end times. That there would be times coming that would require us to really dedicate our lives to Him. The church has been going along for almost 2,000 years now, at least 1,900 years, just kind of lollygagging along, you know. It's interesting the way things have gone over the last couple of uh, thousand years almost. The church started out in much persecution. Remember, we're reading the book of Acts. Isn't that interesting that we're reading the book of Acts? And they started out in much persecution, uh, much uh, uh, maligned by the governments of their time and by the uh, religious structure of their time. The people did not want to hear that Jesus was the Messiah. And they turned their backs on him. And now we are seeing, we always keep saying we want to be like the first church, right? The early church. Well, we are about to watch that ramp back up. We had high persecution and then it leveled off for a long time. And now we're seeing it come back full circle. Come back to another level once again. We are seeing the world reject God Almighty in a way that's unprecedented. On the earth. Well, it was before the flood the same way. And what did God do in the flood? Oh, he kind of judged that, didn't he? He judged the earth because of the sin that was therein. He says, I can't allow them to continue on. He saved out a remnant. He saved out a small remnant and kept them safe. It sounds kind of like almost what he's going to do for us. He's going to take us out and hide us away until he can deal with this earth. But we don't know how bad it's going to get here on this earth before it happens, before he comes to get us. We need to make sure that we are awake and paying attention because right now, the way the world is going, they are wholesale rejecting the Lord God Almighty. With some of the, the court rulings, Lately, we are now in a new time of persecution in the church. Just beginning. This is the beginning of the birth pains. Amen? The beginning of birth pains. We used to have what we call a moral majority. Remember back in the 80s and even into the 90s, we had the, the moral majority. The majority of the, the, this country, anyway, had morals still. And they would uh, rise up against the sin and the dis, uh, disunity in the, in the world. And whenever someone would try and rise up, the moral majority would go, no, we're not going to go for that. That's just crazy. We're not going to allow that. But now that has gone away. It has waned to the point to where now we have an immoral majority. The majority of the world today is rejecting God and His commandments. Everything that he had put in place, they are rejecting it and saying, we do not want any of that. We are demanding our rights to sin. They are demanding their right to sin. Mm -hmm. And if we don't watch it, we can find ourselves as the church falling into the same thing. 
not arising from our slumber in time, and we can yeah. easily find ourselves in trouble. That's why it says, as Brother Bill quoted this morning, yeah. not to forsake the gathering of yourselves together, as is the manner of some, and even more so as you see the day approaching. Boy, if we don't see the day approaching now, we have got to be blind as we can possibly be. When they are calling good evil and evil good, you can read the paper. We've got, I, I've cut out a couple of things from the, uh, the paper here just this week. This was, I think, Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Someone wrote into the opinion page. It says, we have just celebrated Independence Day, but too much independence is a bad thing. Our nation is becoming more and more independent from God. There is no more one nation under God. They have rejected that completely. Statistics say we are a Christian nation, but a Christian nation would not countenance financially support or allow itself to be influenced by the immorality, violence, and taking God's name in vain that are rampant in the media. Even many churchgoers seem to have no compunction about the casual and exploitive use of the name of God, mindlessly absorbing it like other cultural norms from so much exposure to it. We're getting deaf to it. We're getting blind to it. And it's no big deal anymore when people blaspheme God. And, there, and the violence that we're seeing, and we're just kind of growing numb to it. It's like it's the norm now. It's the new norm. I don't like the new norm. I don't want anything to do with the new norm. We will not live our lives like that. We cannot live our lives like that. True Christians love heter uh, homosexuals and treat them with respect, like we were talking about on Wednesday night. True Christians love them and treat them with respect. Despite their insistence that they do, uh, they are labeled homophobes if they do not approve of homosexual activity. We love the person, but we don't like the sin. We're not going to approve of their sin, but we will still love them. They're just like any other unsafe person that's out there doing whatever they're doing and rejecting God. We cannot pick and choose certain uh, sins that we... Uh, esteem higher, more sinful than others. The people are still the same. God still loves them just as much as He loves anyone else on this earth. Amen. But He does not approve of their activity, their lifestyle. And we cannot do that either. We have to take the stand. And we do here. Our legislatures and even our Supreme Court make human laws that defy God laws concerning marriage. Those who disagree are often met with hostility. Our nation is traveling the road of perse to persecution of Christians, which begins with stereotyping and advances to vilifying, marginalizing, criminalizing, and persecuting. Everyone, including atheists, should reject this because they are next. It, it is a step toward totalitarianism. In other words, they rule everything. We will always be children in relation to God. We will always need to depend on Him. And when our nation declares its independence from Him, we rush headlong into self-destruction or require God to take disciplinary action to bring us back into the eternal safety of His loving arms. Man. Man. And we are seeing right now, I was listening to the radio yesterday, I was going to go see Miss Beth, which, praise God, she's, she's doing better, uh, somewhat, uh, but she's still in an ICU, but I kept saying, Lord, isn't it time for me to go, isn't it time for me to go, and I kept getting delayed and delayed. Well, he waited until I could get in the car and hear a couple of stories on the radio. One of them was a man, and I didn't catch his name, I apologize, he was on Fox News not long ago talking about the persecution that is beginning already on the church of God, on his church. And there was a young couple that he had gone to met, or I'm sorry, a, a, an older couple that he had met from Maine, a pastor and his wife. And they were weeping. And they had taken the stand, and what had happened, they had taken a stand against homosexual marriage, 
and against the homosexual lifestyle, standing up for the Word of God. The Word of God is clear. And they went to church one day, and someone had painted a swastika on their church. This is just this past week in the United States of America in Maine. They are painting a swastika on the church and claiming that evil is good and good is evil. They're saying you cannot take a stand for God's word and not in hate but in love and saying, brother, I don't want to see you fry for what you're about to do. God will judge this world. He is going to judge this world. He cannot allow us to continue the way we're going. Cannot. Or else he is not God. He would have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah again. But we love the people. We want them to see uh, them come to repentance and to salvation and to life, praise God. They're living a dead life right now. They're living in darkness and in death. I've been there. It's no fun. Amen. The enemy tries to make it sound like it's all this great time, but you're not having fun at all. Especially when the end thereof is death. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And they're doing what they think is right in their own eyes. You know, we started, it's been coming up for many, many years, but uh, a few years ago, the people in Colorado, where Cindy and I spent 17 years, uh, praise God, he let us back out of there. But they passed a law on the same day to legalize homosexual marriage and also to smoke marijuana. I didn't realize they took the Word of God so literally where it says if a man lies with another man as he lies with a woman, they both should be stoned. Mm -hmm. So they give them the marijuana so they can get stoned, right? Yeah. Oh. So it just went zoom right over. <laughs> they should be stoned. But, you know, that's what the Word of God says, that that is a deplorable lifestyle. But, you know, and, and the legalizing marijuana. I smoked a lot of marijuana in my time before I came to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And it is not that good of a thing. Amen. It gets you so foggy you can't see straight. That's right. And they're starting to realize that as now that they've made it legal there. And they uh, now they're trying to figure out what to do with all these people that are driving around town stoned out of their mind. They don't know what to do with it now. They're, they've created a whole new group of problems that they didn't know about before, right? Amen. It took me literally a year and a half to come out of the fog. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, but it's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with it, man. Yeah. Oh, there's something wrong with it, man. Amen. Well, praise God. We cannot go by our own brain's rationalization. That's right. But they are starting to call good evil and evil good. There is a, a even when they pass this gay marriage uh, ruling, there's no law, it's a ruling from our Supreme Court of this nation, which is just shocking. But one of the uh, Supreme Court judges rose up and said, wait a minute, this can open a whole big can of worms if someone's standing up for their religious freedom and speaking the word of God, this can cause a whole lot of trouble. And they're going, oh, no, 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 that's not going to happen. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't go taking away their, their tax-exempt status and things like that. No, we wouldn't do that. No, right. Uh -huh. See, when the... When the Nazis came to power. We have something within many of our lifetimes to use as an example. When the Nazis came to power, they didn't immediately start persecuting the Jews. They didn't immediately start wholesaling, gathering them up, and throwing in, them into the ovens and into the gas chambers. What did they do? They started marginalizing them. They part, started making them sound like they were the real bad guys of the group. Does that sound familiar to anyone Amen. as to what's happening right now on our earth? Yes. That's what's happening while we are sitting here right now. This is happening now. Yes, we cannot be just sit, sticking our heads in the sand and going out to play baseball or whatever else we're out there doing on, on the, the day of God's time to come before His throne of mercy and grace. To come into His presence and hear His word. 
It is time to be in the house of God and hear what God is saying to His church. It is. Turn with me, if you would, into the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Matthew 25. I had had a really good message all put together, and maybe God will let me bring that one next week because He decided to change that at 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, I had not planned on speaking on this at all. I had a whole other thing, but praise God, this is what God said He wanted to say to His church, this church here today. And I know He's speaking to people that may be listening on the internet and by video. Matthew 25, starting in verse 1. <clears throat> now, you've got to get the context of what's going on here. They had just asked him in, in chapter 24, his disciples asked him the question, when will all the, God, Jesus was talking about, God was talking about the destruction that's about to come on the earth. And so they asked him, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So he proceeded to answer the first question about the tribulation. He talks about the tribulation in there in chapter 24. And then he starts talking about his, the second coming and all that. And then he starts talking about what's going to happen in the end times. And we are in the end times right now. He says, then, then, now for us, this is now for us, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. What is that? That's the church. That is us. That are the, that are the believers. <laughs> what that are? That's the believers. That's us. The ten virgins go out, take their lamps, and go out to meet the bridegroom. But look at this, verse 2. But five of them were wise and five were foolish. Five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps took no, and took no oil with them. But those... But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. The oil is always, in the scripture, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. We need to have the Holy Spirit moving in our lives. We can't just have the, the semblance of being a believer. We can't have the... the, the the salvation without the power thereof. We need to not deny the power of God Almighty in His Holy Spirit. We need to make sure that we have oil in our lamps, that we have the fire burning inside, in other words. Amen? Amen. You can call, you can have a lamp and say, hey, I'm a Christian, just like I can hold up a hamburger and say, hey, I'm a McDonald's, I'm Ronald McDonald. Well, that doesn't make any sense now, does it? It doesn't make you Ronald McDonald by holding up a McDonald's hamburger, does it? But it's the same thing. So many people are calling themselves Christians and they're holding up the lantern, but the lantern is out. There is no oil in the lantern. There's no light in there. There's no fire. There's no power. There's no energy in there. They have left and set aside all that so that they could just have the label. Say, I got my lantern. I got my lantern. It's dead as a doornail. But then I got my lantern. I got my fire insurance. No. But it says that while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slept and slumbered. Or slept, slumbered and slept. It's interesting how the church, as I was talking about in the beginning, how the church started out in much persecution, and then as the persecution waned over the years, they went to sleep. The whole church kind of went to sleep. And the church has been slumbering, as it were, for the last almost 2,000 years, at least 18 or 1,900 years, the church has been asleep, just like he said it would. Wow, all of them, because the bridegroom is delayed. As we're reading in the book of Acts and we read through the epistles, they were expecting Jesus to come before they could get up the next morning. They were expecting him to come at any moment. But he says, you won't know the day or the hour. But they, here's Paul. I think Paul knew the Lord. And he's saying, boy, you know, it hadn't happened yet. Because some people were saying, oh, it's already happened. And he's, no, no, it hadn't happened yet. Don't worry about it. Uh, and he goes to teach them what's going on and what will come to pass. But we need to make sure that 
as now we see the church, as a matter of fact, it's all slept and slumbered all through the, all these years, and now it's starting to wake up. It's the beginning of the awakening because the people are starting to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't have the moral majority any longer. We have the immoral majority. All of a sudden, the church is now a minority, and it is dropping off every year. We can see the polls that are taken that are people that are calling themselves Christians, that are calling themselves have any relationship with God at all. It's waning. The, the church roles are constantly dwindling down. And here I am preaching to a very small few people. But that's okay, praise God. We're going to uh, speak the Word of God. It doesn't matter how many people's here. But you see, the Word of God is true. They all slept and they all slumbered. But the church is starting to wake up. We read it in the paper right here where that's I was just talking about how they were saying that the persecution is about to come. There's several articles in the paper just this past week talking about how the persecution is starting already, that this is going to continually ramp up. As a matter of fact, it says right here, uh, this is more than hypothetical. This is well beyond firing up the base. This is based on the next round of attacks. Then that we have already been queued up. So we're talking about things that are happening now. That's I'm reading that out of the newspaper. They're saying that the conservatives or the Christians are in the midst right now of being ramped up. The, the, the uh, persecution is being ramped up against the churches right now. And they're going, they are saying, and it's going to come to pass where the IRS is going to say, that you can, if you're speaking out against homosexuality or against any particular sin, that you cannot get your your uh, tax exempt status as a church. That's coming. We know it's coming. Even the chief justice, one of the chief justices, spoke that same thing and said, "Aren't we on a real slippery slope here?" No, no, that won't happen. Yeah, it's happening. Yes, sir. So we need to make sure that we are the ones that are awakening early. Because let's see what happens when the ones that were sleeping continue to sleep and don't get their oil in their lamps. Let's go on. Verse 6. And at midnight. At midnight. When everyone's sound asleep and the church has been sound asleep for a long time now. At midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. We are hearing the bridegroom is coming. There is a cry going out. We can see the times and we know that the time is here. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there should be should not be enough for us to use and for you, but go rather to those who sell to the Lord Jesus Christ and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. The door was shut. That can be a scary thing. There are going to be people that call themselves believers that have not adorned themselves in His robes of righteousness and are not living the lifestyle that Jesus Christ told us to lead. They are out there doing whatever they want to do. They have made themselves their own gods. I will go out and serve myself in any pleasure that I want to serve myself in. We have more and more goods. I, I was watching the, the uh, Home and Garden Channel, HGTV, right, where they're going and buying houses and everything. And this one guy was saying, well, okay, we got to have room for the two cars, got to have room for the boat, got to have room for the, the, uh, the uh, little jet skis and the, the uh, mud runner, whatever you call it, the little ATVs and all that sort of stuff. Every kind of thing you can imagine because they're out doing whatever they want to, pleasing themselves, pleasuring themselves in anything that is available to them. And there are more things available to us today than ever in the past. You can spend forever just on one of these things. 
it's, it still blows my mind to see how many people are looking at their telephone while they're driving. Yes. Even though it is now, praise God, against yes. the law. But they're still looking at their phone while they're driving. Mm -hmm. You go into a doctor's office, which unfortunately we go into way too many of those. But wherever you're at, people are uh, playing on their phone, doing whatever they're doing. I almost got broadsided by a lady walking through Walmart because she was pushing her cart while she was, while she was texting. And she almost broadsided me at Walmart. And, I, and she would have, oh, it would have been a horrible wreck, you know, eggs and tomatoes flying all over the place. But we have gotten so used to being served and enjoying our life and doing whatever pleases us instead of being focused on what God Almighty is doing. And if we don't watch it, we will find ourselves asleep with no oil in our lamp. Amen. Praise Amen. God. That is why we must watch and obey. Watch and obey. We must be on the lookout seeing what God Almighty is doing. We have to see the signs of the time. But there are so many churches that have already embraced so much of the sin that's out there. Embraced it. Full scale. We'll take whatever you got out there. They've gone and, and lulled themselves to sleep. And they cannot stay asleep. Because at midnight a cry will be heard. The bridegroom comes. And by the time they open the door... And, the, and the, uh, the bride of Christ, the real bride of Christ, goes into the wedding, the door will be shut. The door will be shut, and you can't go in then. It's over. You, you have to wait. And through the tribulation, I don't want to be here through the tri tribulation, <coughs> praise God. Uh, <clears throat> verse 11, Afterward the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. There are going to be so many believers in so many churches waking up too late and saying, But Lord, wait a minute, we missed the rapture. Hang on, let us in too. And he's going, Sorry, you didn't want anything to do with me while you were while I was still here and ready to to accept you in. You waited too long. There will be people. It, he says there will be people beating on the door mm -hmm. and saying, Lord, let us in. Mm -hmm. And he will have to say, there's a time. And that time is over. We're living in a time of grace. But we cannot allow ourselves to be pleasing ourselves rather than him. Mm -hmm. Obeying our own lusts and our own wants <clears throat> and desires rather than pleasing him. <clears throat> Verse 13. <clears throat> Excuse me. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. He left it that way so that we can't say in the last five minutes, you know, that at three o'clock in the afternoon on November thirty second he's going to be here. So at at one uh, at noon we'd say, hey, okay, you know, I'm sorry, Lord, I uh, ask for you for forgive me and cleanse me and and take me with you. He's made it to where he could come at any moment. Mm -hmm. There really isn't anything else <clears throat> hindering his coming back right now. Amen. He is, I believe, in his mercy, waiting for the last person to be saved that he knows is going to be the last one that accepts him. Mm -hmm. And when that person comes, we don't know who it is or where it is. <clears throat> it could be in Zimbabwe or it could be in Sweden or it could be in Biloxi, Mississippi. I don't know. But he knows. And he knows the day and the hour. He knows the time. We can't be just self-serving and watching whatever we want to do, making ourselves our own gods. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, I lose my voice too quick. But, <clears throat> but God Almighty is crying out to his people and we're seeing it even in the newspaper and seeing it on the news as a matter of fact to where people are starting to rise up and say wait a minute things are really turned in a heartbeat in a very short amount of time wasn't that long ago that the the moral majority was still the moral majority 
And just like the Nazis, when they first took over, it only took a handful of years to go from when they took over to just start saying, you know, those Jews aren't really that good of people. And to start ramping it up over and over and getting it worse and worse and worse to the point to where within a very few years, they were putting them in gas chambers. They were doing that. You think it can happen again? Yeah. 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 I think it can happen again, especially with the media the way we've got it today. The media is on their side to begin with. They're just welcoming them in, saying, yeah, how dare these people stand up for the Word of God. They're calling heroes the people that are mutilating their bodies and calling themselves some gender that they're not. They're, they're calling them heroes. When you get a call from the White House saying, we're just so proud of you for coming out of the closet. Man, clean out the closet. Don't come out of it. Clean it out. Praise God. Get rid of the sin. Turn with me to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. We're going to go all the way to verse 35. This is what I was going to end with from my message I was going to give before God changed it this morning. And interestingly enough, it fits amazingly well with what God changed the first part to. Luke 12, 35. Jesus is speaking, so it's always time to listen up carefully, right? It says, Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. Wow, does that sound like anything we were just talking about? Now we're out of Matthew. We've skipped over Mark and we're into Luke. And here he is saying the same thing. Let your waist be girded. What's that mean? They had these long robes on. They didn't wear pants like we were talking about Wednesday night. They wore these long robes. And if you were going to do any kind of activity, working for God or or, uh, running the race or anything like that, you had to pull that thing up and tie it around your waist and get it out of your way to where you could get your feet to move in now, right? Get to working. So let your waist be girded and your lamps burning, just like he said about the parable of the ten virgins, amen? Let your lamps be burning, full, full of fire. Let your light be shining into the darkness because, my goodness, it's getting dark out there in a hurry. Really, really dark, so fast, it's hard to imagine. The sun set on the day so fast, it took so many of us by surprise. We've seen it coming, we've been saying it's coming for many, many years now, and we are watching it right now. It is actually coming to pass, right in our time. So Jesus is saying that we should be girded up, ready to go, and our lamps burning bright, shining, and not turning to the right or to the left, not letting our lamps go out. And you yourselves be like men who want for their master when he will return from the wedding. Well, it sounds exactly what we were just talking about over in Matthew, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. That we are waiting for our master, not just sitting back like he says in so many other places, oh, my master delays is coming. I'm just out having a good old time. I'm just going to take it easy. And I'll be ready whenever he comes. You know, I can can get ready. But he's going to come in a twinkling of an eye and take his church away. And I don't think you can repent in the twinkling of an eye. We have to be ready and waiting for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately where we are, wherever we are when He comes, He's actually going to come sometime soon. We immediately go, yes, Lord. Now, wait a minute. I'm over here doing this right now. Let me finish this one thing. I, I, I was having so much fun over here doing this thing, right? Doing my own thing. I was having so much fun. Just wait a little bit longer. No, no, no. But immediately we drop whatever we're doing, whatever has consumed us, my favorite show's on, Lord, just give me about 30 more minutes here and it'll be over. And No, what is your God? Is He your God or are you your God? Amen. Are you your own God? Amen. Man, praise God Almighty. But we open the door to Him immediately. 
Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down and eat, and he will come and serve them. Wow. God Almighty will come and serve us. Jesus will come and serve us. Isn't that amazing? That He loves us so much. But if He finds us watching and waiting, He is coming to bring us into the Lamb's uh, the, the wedding feast. Praise God. The wedding feast. When He takes us, He's going to bring us home as His bride into the feast. And that is what He's talking about here. When, we find him, when He comes and finds us watching, He will take us away and He will gird Himself and He will sit down and serve us while we're safely tucked away in heaven while hell is going on on earth, while destruction comes upon the earth. He will keep us safe and sound. We will be the bride in the chamber and enjoying the wedding feast. Praise God. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Sounds almost like Satan, right? This is his house right now. This world is his house. Amen. And he doesn't realize the day or the time either when God's coming, when Jesus is coming back. So he's just ha having a great time right now. Satan is just rejoicing all the way, laughing all the way to the bank, as the old saying goes, because he is taking so many people with him right now. Getting our eyes off of the world, off the Lord, and onto the world. He's getting so many churches that are just following right along. So many Christians that are just sound asleep. Oh, didn't the ten virgins? Oh, they were all virgins. Ah, but half of them weren't wise enough to keep their eyes open and see what's going on and keep their lamps burning in their hearts and saying, yes, Lord, whatever you want here, not how much I can serve myself, not how much good things I can gather in. I want the SUV and I want the boat and I want the everything else to go along with it. Let me see how well I can serve myself here on this earth. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. We must be ready. We must be ready. Setting aside all the other things that so easily distract us, the sin that so easily distracts us, it's so easy to go on and do whatever you want to, just flow, just go on with the flow. Again, the Lord just keeps bringing up the same thing. A dead fish can float down the river with everybody else. But it takes a live fish to be swimming upstream against the tide because the tide is flowing. The tide of immorality is flowing. The tide of doing whatever you want to do and serving ourselves is flowing downhill. It takes a stand. Make sure that your lamps are trimmed and your lamps are burning and your, your waist is girded, ready to go and do the work that God has called us to do. Yes, yes, He's yes. called us so many times here lately in this church that we're a body. We're working together as a body. And if one part isn't working, if the heart shuts down, you're done. If your kidneys shut down, you're done. If one of us isn't doing what we're supposed to be doing, it hurts the rest of the body. Amen. That's why there's safety in the body. Yes. We work together yes. for the good, praise God, of everybody. We should be serving one another. He continues to bring up, love one another passionately and serve one another, putting their lives before our own. Boy, that goes against our own nature now, doesn't it? <laughs> putting your needs before my own, but I like myself. And I like serving myself and doing whatever I want to do. But Jesus says, serve your brothers and sisters. Put their needs and their wants and desires ahead of my own. Put their well-being ahead of my own well-being. My goodness. We're going to come, and we are already coming to the point to where we see our brother without clothing or without food to eat. 
And if we say, hey, be warm, be felt, we're well fed, and don't do anything, and we go home to our nice feast and our air-conditioned house, mm -hmm. and don't do anything about it, we will be held accountable for that. Yes. We have to be coming together as a body. It's what they started with. Ah, isn't that interesting, the parallel? We want to be like the first church. That's what they did. They shared everything together. Am I telling everybody to go sell everything you got and give it all to church? No, I'm not doing that. But we have to be willing when we see our brother or sister hurting and without, and we have an abundance, we have to at least be able to reach in our pockets and say, here, your light bill is about to go. Come on, man. We can't, can't let your lights go out for crying out loud. We can't let you starve. That's why we're giving the, the food away here in our food pantry every week. Praise God. We're here to serve one another. But we get so focused on me, on the big me. What can I do to serve me today? <laughs> I want a double cheeseburger when I can just get a regular cheeseburger and give my brother another one as well for the same price. <laughs> Putting someone else ahead of my own needs and my own wants. My own wants. That's more what we got. If we got all kinds of our needs are met over and above for most of us. Over and above. But but I want that, you know, like they got this new car out, and I just got to go get that one. Or they got this beautiful new boat, and I got to go buy that. Sorry that your, your light bill isn't paid, brother. But, you know, I got the, they got it on sale right now, too, that beautiful boat. And uh, I'll come and take you out to, to go fishing with me sometime, right? Instead of, I think I can forego my luxury to make sure my brother's needs met. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Lord Jesus. Holy are you, Lord God. Holy are you, Lord Jesus. Let's go before his throne. Oh, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, you're speaking to us now. You're speaking to us now. And I believe you're speaking to people that are here right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, to lay aside their own wants and desires. To wake up from their slumber and realize the times that we are living in because they really are here. This isn't just an alarmist message. This is what's going on. This is reality. Just like it says in the paper for crying out loud. They saw that this isn't just hypothetical. This is actually going on in our world right now. And it is the very beginning, the very beginning of the birth pangs. For you to be birthed in your church to be birthed, Lord God. Will we be a part of the real believers? Or will we just find ourselves floating downstream with the rest? Jesus, wash us and cleanse us, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for our sin, Lord God, of sloth and self-indulgence, Lord God. Self-centeredness and self-serving, Lord Jesus, wake us up. Let us awaken ourselves from our slumber. The bridegroom cometh, the bridegroom cometh, cometh, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, let us be found with our lamps burning and our waists girded up, ready to go, Lord God. Not with our heels dug into the land around us, Lord God, and participating in everything that they have. Lord Jesus, Jesus let us separate ourselves into your service. We'll give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen and amen. And I believe if, if the Lord is speaking to anyone here, if He's speaking to anyone here, and saying, you really need to get your life back in order, putting things in perspective, putting Him first and not me first, put yourself first. I invite you to come and, and avail yourself 
the prayer altar. If anyone needs healing in any way, anyone needs counseling in any way, come on up. If you need the Holy Spirit of God Almighty in your life moving because you need that as your light, that is the one that gives you the power and the energy and the light to come. So praise God. If you do not have that Holy Spirit of God Almighty moving in your life, come up.